What's up everyone, welcome back to a brand new series. A few months back I remade one of my older scenarios, which was about Goku finding Broly after the events of Namek. And since it seemed like you guys liked that, I went back to look at some other scenarios that needed updating, and there was an obvious one that came to mind. It's one of my oldest scenarios, and my most popular by far. But despite the popularity, it's, well, the quality doesn't match my current quality. I was just starting out when I made it, and it's a pretty old story, so the editing, narration, etc, all that could use improvement. That makes it the perfect candidate for a remake. Plus, just like with all the other remakes I've done, I'm going to be telling a different story here, even though the scenario will start out the same. Of course, I'm talking about what if Gohan and Goten were twins. We'll start out with the same concept, but the story is going to diverge pretty much immediately. Let's begin this new scenario, what if Gohan had a twin? Well, kind of a new scenario. Our story begins after the 23rd World Tournament. There's only one change we're going to be making right now, and this is going to affect everything going forward. Instead of Goku and Chi-Chi just having one kid, they end up with twins. Fraternal twins too, so they don't look exactly alike. One actually looks more like Goku, if anything. It was completely unexpected, but of course they're happy about this. The kid who was born first is named Gohan, and the one born second is named Goten, with Goten being the one that looks kind of similar to Goku. That's the only change we're going to be making here. Although, there is one more thing to note, we'll say that Goten was born with a tail. Given the point of the story that he was born in, it's still something that Saiyan kids would be born with. So he and Gohan both have tails. And immediately after, not much really happens. Just like in the normal story, Goku and Chi-Chi are off on their own, with more time spent raising their kids because now they have double the kids. It's not just Gohan, but nothing's really different about how they're raised or anything, just the fact that Gohan doesn't grow up as a single child. So, let's skip forward a few years. Goku gets word that there's going to be a reunion at Kame House. That should be pretty fun. He's going to take both Gohan and Goten along. Now that he thinks about it, he doesn't think any of his friends know that he had two kids. And Goku has noticed some strange things about them too. He's never seen them fight yet, but there's just been times where they've done things that are weird. Like at some points it seems like they move from one spot to another instantly. Or during times that they've cried, Goku felt almost what seemed like a power increase. He kind of brushed it off though. Nothing really too concerning. Goku arrives at Kame House, and, much to everyone's surprise, he's there with two kids, one in each arm. Even one kid would have been a surprise, but this is even weirder, with Bulma and Roshi even noting that Goten looks exactly like Goku did as a kid. Which also kind of terrifies them because they see he has a tail too, and Gohan does as well, remembering that Goku also turned into a giant monkey as a kid. They ask Goku about it, and it seems like, well, they've never transformed, and Goku doesn't know anything about it either, so maybe it's good to keep it that way. The reunion starts nice at first, but then, an unexpected visitor arrives. That being Raditz, with them finding out who he is, and pretty much immediately, something catches Raditz's eye there. He sees another Kakarot, Goten, the spitting image of Kakarot and Bardock. But then next to him is also a kid that shares the resemblance to him too. Not with the same hairstyle, but that face is unmistakable. So Kakarot's had kids too. Interesting. Two hybrid Saiyans. And not just that, it seems like they're twins. Them being hybrids is surprising enough, but they've never seen Saiyan twins. From what Raditz remembers, twins are incredibly rare among Saiyans. Although he doesn't pay much mind to it at this point. He congratulates Kakarot on his two kids though. He's glad to meet his two nephews. But Raditz is going to take them for the time being. Maybe he can get all three of the Saiyans to join them. But for now they're just going to be a bargaining chip, just to get Kakarot to come along. As Raditz grabs onto both of them, flying off with his two nephews. Pretty much like normal, Piccolo does show up on the island too, and he and Goku team up to go find Raditz. The fight between Raditz, Piccolo, and Goku ensues. With Gohan and Goten locked inside of Raditz's spaceship. Not much about the fight itself is going to change. Goku's of course not going to be any stronger here. There's a shot that he's slightly weaker than normal because he's busier raising two kids, but not much else changes with this fight at first. Although a few minutes into the battle, there is one big change. Right at the point where Raditz convinces Goku to let go of his tail, he's about to counterattack Goku, but right before his attack hits Goku, something on his scouter catches his attention. His scouter picks up two huge powers nearby. It's those two kids! Gohan and Goten jump out of the spaceship. In a fit of rage, they both launch at Raditz simultaneously. Raditz tries to block the attack. Goten flies around Raditz, headbutting him from the back as Gohan attacks from the front. Raditz is left barely able to stand. All the wind is knocked out of him, and he took some significant damage from that too. He then swings both his arms out to the side, knocking both Gohan and Goten away. But this gives Goku an opportunity. He's still okay because he never got hit by Raditz that first time. He runs up to him, grabbing onto his tail. Holding Raditz still as Piccolo charges another attack. But Raditz knows what's coming. At the very last second, mustering up what little strength he has left, all while his tail is being held by Goku, he then tries to launch a blast point blank at Goku's face. Piccolo launches his own beam, and this attack disorients Goku for a bit too. But he's still using all his strength to hold onto Raditz's tail. But Raditz is also able to grab onto Goku, trying to swing them both around. And the attack hits, with Raditz barely being able to move Goku in front of him. It's a direct hit on Goku. And Raditz is about to laugh, but the attack goes right through his brother, then piercing through Raditz's side. From a combination of the damage he received from Gohan and Goten, as well as the attack hitting him and then the blood loss following it, Raditz immediately collapses to the ground, unconscious with Goku also falling to the ground, near death from this attack. Piccolo's the last one standing. He walks up to them to finish Raditz off. He sticks out a hand ready to kill him, but Raditz briefly wakes up, telling them this was a big mistake. The Saiyans are going to kill them next. 
and now they can't get any info out of him. Piccolo nearly launches the blast, but Goku tells him to wait. They need to learn more about the Saiyans. If Raditz actually does have some more info about them, that could be useful. He weakly laughs, saying that didn't go to plan, but tells Piccolo it's up to him, as well as Gohan and Goten. It seems like the Saiyans are coming regardless. Goku draws his last breath, then dying. Taking the brunt of the attack, with Raditz barely clinging onto life. Reluctantly, Piccolo stops charging the blast. Goku's right, they do need some more info, and then he'll dispose of the Saiyan. But this could help them prepare. But Raditz is unconscious, and it seems like he won't be waking up anytime soon. And out in space, Vegeta and Nappa have seen this whole thing. Intrigued at the power that those two kids showed off. Could it be because they're hybrid Saiyans? Could it be because they're both twins? Maybe it's a mix of both because they've never seen either before. Especially in tandem. What kind of power do these two kids hold? And it looks like Raditz might have died too, with Vegeta just laughing this off. He deserved it if he was killed by those weaklings. They're better off without him anyways. And they also hear about the Dragon Balls too. Because not too long after, the others arrive and Piccolo talks to them about the Dragon Balls. Saying they'll bring Goku back, but they have no idea when the Saiyans are going to come, or how strong they are. Raditz went unconscious pretty quickly, and maybe it's good that they kept him alive because if he killed Raditz right away, they'd be pretty much going into this blind. Piccolo tells the others he's going to take the two kids, and he's going to train them up to be stronger. They showed some good potential, and he's probably the only one who could be capable of this. And Krillin notes that it seems like Raditz is still alive, and Piccolo knows that. He'll take Raditz along with him too. It won't be too hard to kill him anyways. Piccolo just needs to keep him alive a little bit longer to get some info out of him. And when he gets what he needs, he'll eradicate Raditz. It looks like Piccolo's got a lot on his plate though, because now he's training two kids, and he has to babysit Raditz too. But it's not like the others can do anything anyways, because Piccolo just flies off with them. Grabbing both the twins with one hand, and then holding Raditz in the other. He'll report back to them soon enough and let them know what's going on. The first thing he does is throw the twins in the wilderness, then dragging Raditz away. He grants him a little bit of key trying to wake him back up, just to learn more about these Saiyans. Gohan and Goten wake up in the wilderness, with no idea of where they are. And Piccolo hears them crying, which kind of annoys him. Raditz still hasn't woke up yet, so he goes over to Gohan and Goten and tells them what's going on. He asks if they remember that power that they used against Raditz, because he's going to unlock that again. With this training, they'll be the strongest warriors ever. He then tries to bring that power out once more, quickly grabbing onto Gohan, throwing him into a mountain. As Gohan flies through the air, he then has a huge burst of anger, launching a blast that completely flattens the mountain. But at the same time, Goten gets mad, launching at Piccolo and attacking him. Piccolo's barely able to dodge, but just the power of Goten launching at him alone knocks his arm completely off, cutting clean through it. He looks behind him and sees Goten lying on the ground, looking over at Gohan who is in the middle of a flattened area. And Goten then calms down too, realizing that everything's okay. Both of them have the same power, much to Piccolo's surprise. Piccolo tells him what he plans to get out of this training, as he flies back off to Raditz, leaving them alone in the wilderness. But once he gets back to where Raditz was, he's not there. Although he couldn't have made it far, Piccolo may have woken him up and cauterized his wounds, but Raditz is still very weak right now. And if he doesn't get any medical attention soon, he's just gonna die regardless. A blast then comes at Piccolo from behind. He quickly turns around, opening his mouth and launching his own blast back at it. The blast barely had any power in it, and he knows it's from Raditz. He sees Raditz weakly standing there with a the hand out, collapsing to the ground barely able to hold himself upright. He honestly didn't think Raditz would wake up that soon. But he's got some questions for Raditz. Raditz then holds a hand over his scouter, covering the microphone. He tells Piccolo, destroy this thing on his face, and then he'll give him the info he wants. But destroy it with a blast, and make it look like he's attacking Raditz. He then uncovers the microphone, with Piccolo unsure of what to do. But Piccolo ends up doing it. It's not like this will have any downside for him. On the other end of the scouter, Vegeta and Nappa see that Raditz was alive briefly, but it seems like now he just got killed for real. What an idiot. He got a second chance and died anyways. But Piccolo asks why he did that, and he wants to get more info out of Raditz too. Raditz is clearly very angry, and he's going to choose his next words wisely. He tells Piccolo he'll give him all the info he needs. He knows Piccolo probably plans to kill him right after anyways, but then says how he wants this to go down. He'll give Piccolo the information, then Piccolo will heal him. That's funny, why would he do that? First of all, Raditz knows that his life is valuable right now because of the info he has, but also, he's turning on the Saiyans. Obviously, Piccolo doesn't believe this right away, especially because he tried to trick Goku before too. And Raditz explains, thanks to what Piccolo just did, he faked his own death. The Saiyans think he's actually dead now. And while he was unconscious most of the time, he heard the things Vegeta and Nappa were saying over the scouter. It sounded like they were better off without Raditz, and they wanted to get rid of him anyways. They didn't even care to bring him back to life if he were dead. And in that brief moment where Piccolo was gone and Raditz woke up again, Raditz got in contact with Vegeta and Nappa once more, and they just shrugged it off, telling Raditz that he's a pathetic loser for failing his mission. They're gonna come and finish the job, but don't expect any help from them. Although, if he's able to kill that Namekian, then maybe they'll bring some extra parts to help repair his spaceship, because he's stranded on Earth right now. So Raditz made it look like he was gonna fight Piccolo. Although now, to Vegeta and Nappa, it looks like he died against Piccolo. Raditz is furious at them. They don't even want to help him. They don't care about him. And here's what he plans to do. When they get here, he's gonna help kill them. He doesn't want to stay on this wretched planet anyways but he also knows he can't trust them or go back with them. He'll prove to those Saiyans that he's stronger than them. And once they're dead, he'll take their space pod and leave this planet. Also telling Piccolo that he'll leave them alone for the time being. He'll even help against the Saiyans. 
Well, this is kind of good for Piccolo. He doesn't know if Raditz is trustworthy because he already tried to trick them once and he just betrayed both of his allies too. But the story does check out. And plus, Raditz already starts giving him some more info about the Saiyans, including the time frame for their arrival. You know what? Piccolo goes along with it. And after he gets all the info out of Raditz, he doesn't kill him. Piccolo turns away and then leaves, going to tell all the others what's happening. With Raditz yelling out at him, he's forgetting to heal him. Piccolo simply sticks a hand out, lending him a little bit of key. He's not gonna heal him. Raditz should be lucky that Piccolo's letting him live. They don't know if they could trust him yet. It would be stupid to heal him, especially after that trick he pulled before. Raditz is angered, but before he's about to have an outburst, he then laughs a little bit. Very well then, very clever too. Raditz is left there to his own devices, with Piccolo going back to Kame House. The rest of the group hears the info about the Saiyans and when they're about to arrive on Earth. And Raditz gave them even more info. Not only do they know when the Saiyans are gonna arrive, but they know what both of them are like. They know about their personalities, what their powers are like, some of their special moves, things to watch out for too. It seems like it'll be a tough fought battle because especially that Vegeta guy, he seems really powerful, way beyond where they are right now. Piccolo even got a comparison of his own power level with everybody. The power levels mean nothing to him and they've lost the scouter anyway so they can't measure it anymore. But it seems like even at their peaks, their power still wasn't enough to even eclipse Nappa. It was still multiple times weaker. But those two kids, apparently their power level shot up really high. Raditz says they nearly killed him, especially with that combined attack. Their combined power together would have been more than enough to kill Raditz easily, if they knew how to wield it. And that's exactly why Piccolo's gonna focus even more on training them. And he says that he's gonna keep Raditz alive too. Much to the surprise of the others, especially because he's responsible for killing Goku after all. But Piccolo reminds them, Goku was the one that told him to leave Raditz alive in the first place. It seems like Goku trusted Piccolo's judgment, so they're gonna have to trust him on this too. Besides, if he acts out of line, he won't be too hard to defeat. Piccolo's letting him heal up naturally, which is gonna take a while, meaning he's vulnerable. And by the time he's even able to fight back again, Piccolo would have probably surpassed him. Although little does Piccolo know, Raditz is gonna get a Zenkai once he's fully healed. But Piccolo doesn't see Raditz as a threat anymore. Over the next few months, he keeps training the two other kids, being hands off at first, but they're able to succeed really well in the wilderness. In the original story, it's obviously just Gohan alone out there. But with both of them together, they're able to thrive. There is an issue at one point though where both of them go grade eight, but thankfully Piccolo is able to blow up the moon before that becomes an issue. Raditz doesn't even notice this at first because this is right after that fight. But he takes notice eventually because he heard that this planet did have a moon and he never sees it at night. He wonders what happened, but doesn't question it. Although he wonders what those kids are up to. By now, Piccolo's training with Gohan and Goten is a lot more hands-on. They're growing quickly because they're out there in the wilderness together, training with each other, and now training together with Piccolo. Even though it was scary being out in the wilderness, they had each other to survive. And at one point, Piccolo even does try to separate them to see how they do, and they're still okay, making it back to each other and being fine. The two of them having each other really helps their strength grow. And now we're about nine months into the training, and this is where Raditz finally seeks out Piccolo. At one point, Raditz does find Piccolo again. He hasn't seen Raditz in a while and hasn't felt his power rise either. Raditz was able to keep a surprisingly low profile, which worried Piccolo, but Kami said that he'd alert Piccolo if Raditz was doing anything. And clearly he has been doing stuff, but not much with fighting. Piccolo hears a vehicle approaching, as a motorcycle then pulls up to where he is. He doesn't recognize the man on it at first, but once he steps off, Piccolo can immediately tell by his face, his hair, and the scar on his torso. It's Raditz, in a completely different getup. How did he even find them? Piccolo didn't think that Raditz would be able to find them out here, and he didn't really want Raditz finding them. But Raditz has that little thing they could do where they could sense powers. Yeah, he could do that now. He even opens a jacket showing the giant scar that he got. Healing from this really gave him a nice boost in power too, although he hasn't been fighting much recently. Unless you count bar fights, because that's really his only activity. Going to bars and driving motorcycles. Yep, Biker Raditz is back in the scenario. He said he wants to see his two nephews and how they're growing. They'll be really helpful in killing the other two Saiyans. He tells Piccolo he wants to lend a hand training them too. And Piccolo is surprised that Raditz is more motivated. He knew that he wanted to help kill the Saiyans, but now he's proactively joining them too. And Raditz says these last few months alone have left him thinking. He still does want to get off this planet and kill the other two Saiyans, but he was foolish to think that he could do it alone. He got defeated by these guys alone, so why would he be able to defeat the Saiyans? He needs to take a more hands-on approach. And also on top of that, he wants to be an instigator. This will really get to the Saiyans if he trains up the people that are gonna kill them. He's not too sure about his own ability, especially because his wound didn't even really heal that properly, but he thinks he's back in fighting shape. And besides, what better way for those two kids to access their own rage boost by fighting their uncle, the same one who tried to kill them before? Gohan and Goten are visibly nervous about this, but again, they have each other, which calms them down. They made it through Piccolo's training, and now they're gonna make it through Raditz's training. Piccolo can't believe it's gotten to this, but Raditz still hasn't done anything bad, so maybe he actually is serious about joining them. This can't be a ruse because he's really playing the long game if it is. He would have definitely done something by now if he wasn't serious. Now is the final leg of their training, with Goku in Otherworld, training with King Kai, hearing about all this too. He's still pretty pissed off at Raditz, but glad to see that he's on their side now, hoping that Gohan and Goten will be okay too. They'll be more than ready to fight the Saiyans, and this is where we'll leave off for now. What'd you guys think about this part? Leave any thoughts or suggestions in the comments below. I'd love to see what you guys think. As usual, be sure to drop a like and subscribe if you haven't already, especially if you want this scenario to continue into a full story, or if you just want to help out the channel too. 
Anyways, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in my next video.